Hello. I hope you are doing as well as I am. I've had a very busy last two weeks or so, and I've got a lot of good progress to show you today. It's a pretty exciting one. So let's just get straight into it. Over the last two weeks, the first thing that I did was to do the motor testing that I was talking about in the previous video, where I want to know exactly how many steps per second I can send to my motors so that I know exactly how fast I can possibly make them go. So I had previously done this with one motor and I could get 15,000 steps per second to the motor. And I wanted to try this with all six at once just to see how fast I could get them to go. And it was an interesting test. I definitely was not really expecting the results that I got. I was expecting the bottleneck in this process to be the microcontroller because everything else, as far as I'm aware, down the line can handle way more than 15,000 steps per second. The motors, as far as I'm aware, they can go super, super high. I honestly have no idea what they can actually get to, but as far as I'm aware, it's, it's, it's very high. Uh, the next thing down is the motor drivers. Those ones that I have, the DM556s, are quoted to be able to handle 200,000 steps per second, which is quite a bit more than I'm getting with 15,000. And in my mind, that leaves one thing, which is the microcontroller. I'm using a TNC 4.0, which is pretty quick at 600 megahertz. And I don't really know what I'd be expecting, to be honest, from this controller. When I was using Arduinos before that have a clock speed of, I think, 8,000 megahertz, they, I was getting like 4,000 steps per second as the max, and I didn't really know how these things scaled, so I wasn't really too sure what I was expecting. But I'm getting 15,000 steps per second, and my expectation was that, given that that was the limit, or so I think, uh, for one motor, it seems reasonable to me that if I'm doing six motors, that that 15,000 steps per second would have to be shared across the six, and so they would each get 2,500 each-ish, I guess. Um, yeah, so I was expecting that to be the limit, so that I could only run them up to 2,500 steps per second. But it turns out, for whatever reason, I can get all of them, all six, up to pretty much 15,000 steps per second. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same limit that I was, maybe not the exact same, but it's, it's very close to the limit that I was hitting before. It's like 14,700 or something like that. Um, yeah, so I can get all six of them going at that pace. Granted, when I was doing this test, I was getting them all to do the exact same movement while well, they're all speeding up at the same rate. So it's possible that that has something to do with it. And if I try to get them to do different movements, like at different stages in a sine wave or something like that, then maybe the speed, the steps per second will drop down, but I'm skeptical that that's going to be the case. And I never tested it. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, but either way, yeah, it's, I can run them all at 15,000 steps per second, which I was not expecting remotely which makes me think that it's going to be possible to increase that. Like what, as soon as I figure out what's at the bottom of this issue, then I should potentially be able to get my motors to run it up to the driver limit of 200,000 steps per second, which would be pretty good. That would make me be able to move the, the legs at theoretically, according to just that, if that's the bottleneck at more than like a meter and a half per second or something crazy like that. In reality, I would not expect to be able to run them that fast because they're not going to have enough force to be able to actually push against what they're pushing against at those speeds. Um, but in theory, potentially. Either way, for me right now, I'm pretty happy with 15,000 steps per second. That should, in theory, get me a change in length of 140 millimeters per second, which is pretty quick. That should be fast enough to... <laughs> that will definitely be fast enough to throw a ball up. So I'm okay with that for now. So once I had finished with that testing and I got to the point that I was pretty happy with, the next thing I had to do was to build the remaining five legs. So previously, a little while ago, I built the top parts of all of them, except for one. Uh, so a couple days ago, I built the remaining top part and the remaining and like put the top part with the motors and the bottom part for the remaining five legs giving me the total of six full legs and from there it was pretty quick to bolt them onto the uh, piece of wood and to then attach the top frame part on which right now is just the, like a flat thing it's not the actual proper top part of Juggerbot which is what I have here with the whole like sliding throwing thing so that's going to be 
in the... <laughs> when it's actually together. But for now, I don't want to have to deal with that moving around. Like, <laughs> these have little strings on them. And in case you haven't noticed, we have two cats and they will definitely mess around with this. So I'm gonna try to, I'm <laughs> leaving that off for now and just having a simple flat top just while I'm testing things out. Yeah, and it was super fun to put this together. It took a while as everything has <laughs> to actually like physically build it all. Um, but yeah, it was pretty fun. Like getting it all together was pretty quick. The only thing is that it's super heavy right now. I don't actually have scales that I'm capable of weighing something like this. We only really have like luggage scales and really small scales. So I don't have any way to actually measure this, but I'm gonna guess it's probably around 20 to 25 kilos. It's pretty big. It's definitely difficult to move around. After it was all together, before I actually ran the motors and everything, I wanted to make sure that the limit switches actually worked. So just as a recap, there are limit switches at the bottom of the stroke for every actuator. So it can move up and down freely, blah, 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 blah. But then if it hits this limit switch, the idea is that I can make it stop and nothing will go wrong. I can also, I'm also going to be using this as a homing technique so that at the very beginning when I turn Dogglebot on, so that all the step herders know exactly where they are, they know where like home position is, uh, they will all go down until they hit that floor, until they trigger the switches, and then they know where ground is, they know where zero is. And I wanted to be sure that these worked because in my testing with this before, <laughs> I was just not super careful with doing this and I did a pretty good job of bending up one of the uh, collars that attaches the motor spindle to the ball screw and it's pretty bent up but thankfully it still works so I'm pretty happy with that. I did as a result of this buy an extra one uh, just in case I do any more damage to any of them but it still works pretty well for now so I can't really see any tangible loss as a result of it being expanded out so I'm just leaving it. Yeah, so I wanted to be sure that all of the switches would work perfectly. So my plan was to make some code that made the the top part of Jogglebot just like move up and down, hitting the switches a bunch of times, like a hundred times or something, and then just make sure that they all tallied to be a hundred. Uh, but, but in my creating this code and actually like putting it all together and like just the number of times that I had to test everything, I realized that the switches do work. I'm pretty confident that they do. There's one that's giving a really weird false signal. It is occasionally triggering as being pushed when it's not being pushed. But I think that's something weird to do with the wiring. I haven't actually had a chance to check that out yet. Um, but it's not causing any issues. Like as, as long as it doesn't go the other way and as, so as long as it triggers when it's pressed, that's fine. Having a false positive is, I mean, not ideal, but as far as I can tell, it's not too bad, for now at least. Uh, yeah, so I didn't end up doing the, the bouncing switching thing because in my creating of the code, I was pretty happy, with, pretty happy with the switches and was just getting too uh, excited by the idea of being able to control this with my space mouse. And so I just stopped doing that. I'm pretty confident the switches will work and I just wanted to do the cooler stuff instead because it's more fun. And so that's what I did. There was a fair bit of stuffing around with the Arduino library that I'm using. If anyone, if anyone's interested, I'll just keep this super brief. The, I'm using the Excel stepper library and within that is a class called the multi-stepper class, which nominally allows you to control all, as many steppers as you like, I think up to 10 normally, uh, super easily. You can like control them as like a group. I think this is designed for art installations and that sort of stuff. Maybe printers would use this as well, but it makes it basically it makes all of the, the motors move together so that if one needs to make a really big movement and one needs to make a really small movement, they the speeds are calculated so that they start and finish at the same time, which is not really what I want to do. I did think of a way of sort of like shoehorning this into a way of working with the way the juggle what will actually work, but I don't think it's it's not ideal for what I'm doing. And more importantly, this class, this multi-stepper class does not allow for accelerations. It doesn't compute accelerations. So if you tell it to go from zero to super, super fast really quickly, 
it's just going to do that and then the stepper motors knock me out to do it and you get that awful grinding sound. So that's not very good. I want to be able to just tell the stepper to go to here, super far away, and have it figure out how fast it can accelerate to get there, at like maximum acceleration. So yeah, I was stuffing around for a little while with that and then eventually I just abandoned the multi-stepper thing and I'm just doing it with Excel stepper with loops and it's, it's so much neater, it's so much nicer. Uh, but now it's actually working and I can control it with my space mouse. The controlling is a little bit not mapped correctly. I haven't taken like full correct dimensions yet between this model and the model, like the virtual model that the space mouse is actually controlling. It's a bit weird. Um, but that doesn't really matter. I'm never, I'm not planning on actually using this with the space mouse to do anything proper. It's just as like a toy. So it doesn't really matter that it's like 5% off. Uh, but yeah, it's still super fun and it's very fast. It's, I'm imagining it's gonna be very powerful. I haven't had a chance to test this with any actual mass on it, but I am very confident right now that this will have no problems moving relatively quickly with me sitting on top of it. I'm just a little bit worried to do that by myself, particularly because these carbon fiber rods in the middle, they're very strong axially, but they're not strong with bending stress. So I don't really wanna to have to I don't, want to ha I don't want to risk snapping them, essentially. So yeah, that's what I've been up to for the last two weeks. It's been a <laughs> pretty fun time. I'm definitely enjoying how this is going so far. It's very cool. The next couple steps that I am going to be working on are putting this top bit on properly so that it's actually attached and connecting these strings up. So with that, I'm also, if you remember back from a couple of videos ago, my plan is to have motors down on the ground that are attached to strings that go up to up here, up onto these pulleys, and the strings go down so that when the platform moves around, those motors can adjust the length of that string so that this length in here stays the same all the time, irrespective of where all the legs are. I don't think the code for that should be too tricky given everything else that's going on, but the mechanical side of things is a little bit annoying because well, actually, no, the mechanical side of things is actually fine because I have a bunch of these smaller motors and it's going to be pretty easy to attach them onto the bottom of Jogglebot given how I've added a bunch of extra holes, just like mounting holes. So I don't think that should be too troublesome. And of course, with the 3D printer, I can just print literally whatever object I want to go with this. I think the tricky thing is going to be the electronics because I totally forgot about these when I was designing the PCB and the electronics box. And so there are no free IO pins on the microcontroller that I have easy access to, at least. There are, I think there's enough, <laughs> I think there's enough free pins on the Teensy, but I just don't have very easy access to them. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of sketchy soldering to get that to work. Uh, but then I also have no ports on the outside of the electronics box to actually plug these into, nor any space for the drivers or anything like that. It should be okay because these motors are so much smaller and they're going to be putting out so much less force. I should be able to use these little tiny drivers instead of the massive ones that I'm using for these big motors. So it should all fit in there, but it's not going to really be as neat as it, well, neat as it currently is. So we'll see. Another thing that I would like to do at some point soon, I don't, it's not super high on my, my list right now, but I want to get to the bottom of that 15,000 steps per second problem. I'm planning on using my oscilloscope to help out with this so that I can like sort of see what the signal looks like at different stages, at different speeds. But I haven't really used my oscilloscope very much and it's it's going to take me a little while, I think. So And it's not super high on my, my to-do list. So we'll see if, if I get to that in the next two weeks. Who knows? And that's about it. So those are the two most important things that I am anticipating needing to do soon. Once the top is on and all the motors and everything are uh, hooked up properly, it shouldn't be too tricky to get the control with the space mouse going. And then I'm gonna have to do a little bit of mathiness to figure out how I want to scale the movement of the, uh, the hand in here with respect to the movement of the arm, but I don't think that should be too problematic. We'll see. And then it'll very quickly enter the domain of the actual visual tracking of the balls, which is gonna be a lot of fun. 
if you're interested in what my plan is for the visual side of things, I've got a video on that that I posted a couple weeks ago. And so check that out if you're interested. There is one other thing that I want to just bring up as a design thing that I think might be changing soon. I currently have on the end of the ball screws, I have a nut that's stopping the ball screw from being pulled out away from the motor. And my plan for that was just to make the ball screw a little bit more attached, like more fixed in place so that it can't actually, it can't get yanked out of, out of its position. But the more that I think about it, the more I realize this can only really be a source of problems because what's going to happen is if the limit switch doesn't work and the ball nut that's right, that's being driven on the screw and that goes down past the limit switch and just compresses it without stopping the motor. And if it keeps going, if the nut is not there, stopping the ball screw from going up, the ball screw will just go up and it will separate itself from the collar or at least stretch the collar and the collar between the motor and the ball screw will be the thing that breaks first as what is as is what happened before when i was testing this out uh that's obviously not ideal but it's better than something else breaking if the nut is there and it's stopping the ball screw from going out then i don't really know what's going to break to be honest the printed part is pretty strong i'd be surprised if that got crushed so I think the motor st might start skipping steps first, which would be fine, I guess. Like the motors are okay to, sk to skip steps. Either way, whatever it is, I don't really want to know what will happen there. So I'm thinking of just taking all the nuts off, just for safety reason. I also noticed today when I was doing my testing, getting it working with the space mouse control, that one of the nuts had actually come undone. I'd, I had put Loctite on it and tightened it up to be exactly where I wanted it to be but apparently the Loctite wasn't enough and just with so much vibration, it came off. So I think I'm just gonna take them all off, but it's a little bit of effort to do that. So I think I'm just gonna leave them on for now and then eventually take them off, we'll see. There were also a couple weird anomalous things that happened, like when I was testing the motors, when I was running at about 9,000 steps per second, one of the motors just cut out randomly and it did it consistently as well at the same point in its speed ramping. So I didn't really know what was going on there. At 10,000 steps, it worked fine. And all the way up to like 15,000, they were all on par with each other. It's just at that one speed, that one motor wasn't working. Very weird. Also today, when I was doing the space mouse control testing and everything before that, one motor just stopped receiving input from the drivers entirely. Like I could spin the, the shaft freely as though it wasn't even plugged into the power supply. And this just randomly happened out of nowhere. I took the main part of Juggerbot off the electronics box and opened it up, couldn't see anything wrong, put Juggerbot back on and plugged everything in. I'm pretty sure the motors were in a different orientation, so they weren't the exact same motors attached to the exact same drivers, but they all worked. So I don't really know what the problem was. I didn't really change anything. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Goblins lurk within. And that's about it for this video. I'm going to be a little bit busy over the next couple of weeks, so I don't know how quickly I'm going to be able to finish the stuff that I've mentioned in this video, but I'll try to get to it as quick as I can because I am just as excited as everyone else to see this actually throw and catch balls. I just want to see it in action, you know. It's getting very close and I'm getting more excited by the day. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any thoughts at all on any of what I've discussed, then feel free to let me know in the comments. And I hope you have a great day. Till the next one.